from our site. Welcome. Um, it's good to have you guys here and thank you for attending this webinar. So today we will be focusing on utilizing Trimble Business Center and Trimble Axis for underground mining. I'm joined by my colleague um, Albert Willifier, who is the segment manager for uh, Geospatial at Optron. Um, and Albert, yeah, thank you for, for attending. And um, myself, I'm the subject matter expert for 3D laser scanning and augmented and virtual reality at Optron. Right, so for the agenda for today is we're just going to run through, you know, why the Optron group, tell you a little bit about, you know, what uh, what do we have currently, you know, where we are, where we started from, um, and then we're going to move over to, you know, why the Trimble products, then we're going to spend some time on the Trimble mining survey portfolio, just to show you what do you need to um, make use of um, and actually now focus on the on the um, getting the best of your mining operation and and also hopefully speeding up the whole process and then we I'm going to just um, explore and show you a little bit about the Trimble Mine survey website and then I'm going to give it over to my colleague Albert that he was going to do a live demonstration on um, using the solution now to do your data preparation for your de uh, tunnel designs um, and, and those kind of things. Um, and then also, then afterwards, we, uh, we're going to have a session open for Q&As and, um, and then lastly close off with a social media site just to show you guys uh, where can you um, have a look at what we have got to offer. Um, yeah, but ultimately let's start off with the wider Optron group. So Optron has been providing technology solutions um, to sub-Saharan markets for over 30 years already. So our dedicated industry-focused subsidiaries are Optron Geospatial. Um, that is now ultimately where the surveying equipment started from. Um, and then uh, SciTech SA, this is now your uh, civil engineering construction. We've got Vantage SSA, which is the precision agriculture. And our latest edition is the uh, Building Point SA uh, subsidiary. So using all the technology um, in the various subsidiaries, um, you can now um, use that for the mining industry. So typically uh, for planning, production, processing, health and safety, and finance to make more informed and faster decisions. For instance, linking up your Trimble G and SS receivers onto um, drill rigs or to heavy vehicles um, so that you can actually now drill onto um, in centimeter accuracy on a specific point. So ultimately, using all these various subsidiaries, um, the, the technology that's currently available, you can now um, use and you'll see more of this happening now using those technologies for m the mining industry. This is just a list of all the the the, the uh, suppliers that we currently um, that's in our portfolio. So uh, probably Trimble. This is the one that Optron is uh, most famous for. There you will also see um, a new one, Exxon Technologies. This is in short uh, drone technologies that's now used for underground um, uh, mining of mapping of stopes, for example, where it's uh, not safe to actually enter the the the, the stope areas. You can now make use of those. Um, we've got a couple of products in that port, uh, in, under uh, from that supplier to actually now map out your stopes. Other than that, another option also for underground mapping is uh, Juicelam, um, the, the, the Juicelam products. This is now handheld units where you can now go and you can um, basically geo-reference your data and um, map out your underground operation. And then just to maybe just to list another one is the Carlson products, for example. If you need to get to dangerous areas underground and you can't actually get access to it um, through the existing mining tunnels, you can then drill holes and actually deploy the Carlson scanners to actually map out those voids. This is just to list a, uh, name a few. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen, um, you know, and, and, famili and are familiar with the, the other brands. Um, but yeah, this is just to give you guys an update on the the list of supplies that we currently have. All right, so um, let's go over to the next one. Okay, so why Trimble? This is just some of the key points as to you know what Trimble is um, mainly um, 
you know, um, why Trimble, obviously. So currently, um, Trimble is constantly looking for ways to make its users more productive in the, in the field with either new technology or automated workflows. So it speeds up your productivity. The hardware technology is durable and is purposely built for the harshest environment. So for instance, um, and I'm going to take you guys through a couple of slides after this, just mentioning some of the products. And uh, with a dedicated service center and after-sales support network in place, Trimble is a brand that you can rely on. So no matter what the source of your data is, data can be imported to a central hub to deliver a single source truth. Interoperability, this is now where you can now just bring all the various sensors and, 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 and data sets together. And then simplicity, making use of purposely built workflows to speed up your process to get the job done faster and, 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 and also still effective. All right, so on the productivity side of things, um, as I've mentioned, Trimble is constantly working on new workflows. So just to show you this example, this is now using the, 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 um, the, the, the Trimble axis for underground mapping and or um, underground surveying. Here you can see uh, the drill holes being selected. By selecting that, the turtle station is automatic, automatically moving over to where that position is. So this is what you can now see on this screen here on your right hand side. So making use and also um, the type of hardware that they develop is for instance with the SX12, this is an all-in-one instrument where you can now s do your normal day-to-day -day survey work but also it's got a scanning um, capability as well. So while you do this your data is already georeferenced in the field and um, yeah, just making you more product productive at the end of the day. There you can just see some of the, of uh, you know, some of the, uh, the functions where you can actually now set out where the blasting um, or your blast hole should be. And then this is just showing you a typical point cloud data that has now been scanned and that you can now visualize and interact with on your TC7 controller. So on the durability side of things. Here you can see the S-series uh, robotics, so it's, it's built to withstand the harshest environments. And also with the mag drive technology, this is now to um, the specific technology. There's no gears, so it doesn't really, the, the, your gears doesn't wear. So this is really a kind of a, a niche technology that's really makes the, 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 the instruments quite, quite and puts in, 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 a, in a league of its own, where you know, it, it, it doesn't make noise, so with this, that specific mag drive technology, it really, really helps and reduces downtime where it reduces the time that you actually spend on repairs. So here you can see the IP rating of 65, and it's the best sealed drive currently on the market. Interoperability, this is the complete field to finish workflow. It's a seamless integration on sending the data backwards and forwards where you can now ca uh, prepare your, uh, your, 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 your designs and um, prepare your data, sending it off to Trimble Access to go and do the field survey and then sending it back to TBC. So what makes it also, it's one software package that you need to learn, so it reduces using various software packages to actually get the job done. Okay, so then the Trimble Mining Survey Portfolio, just to, 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 to show you guys this. So Trimble has been involved in tunnel construction survey technology for several years already. So this technology has now been adopted and used for underground mining surveys. So TBC is used for data preparation and then it's sent to Trimble Access for data capture in the field and as you can see there and then ultimately once the data has been captured back to TBC to then do your um, for, for analysis and reporting purposes. The solution has been tried and tested tested and makes for the ultimate underground mining survey portfolio. Right, so here you can just see this once again, just the, the design and data prep that's now being done in TBC. So there's just some of the, of the, of the uh, benefits. So you've got um, automated CAD tools, you can do a full alignment and geometry support, and then once again, after that is done, it's a seamless process of sending the data to the Trimble Access, con uh, your, your field controller. 
Then just to highlight some of the key features in TBC tum tunneling, you've got your automated and manual design tools. So it doesn't matter if you're working on a local system, it's really a matter of importing your data, doing your tunnel design. Um, you can, it doesn't really matter if you've got the complex design where it's now a curved effect, doesn't matter. It's a matter of taking your data in and, and uh, quickly creating this. And um, as you can see, and then next up is your, the productivity side of things where you can also now, as I've mentioned, scan your data um, or, or scan, scan your, your underground operation and then once again the data has already been georeferenced and you can now import it. In TBC tunneling you can do your under and over break reporting so you will already know um, after you've, you've done the survey, you got the data, you can now take the data, compare it to the design and already see you know, how far you're actually deviating from the actual design. And then, as I've mentioned, field and office interoperability. This is a seamless integration, taking the data, preparing, or rather preparing the data, sending it to your, um, your controller, and then doing the survey work. Then a, just a quick step-by-step -step process on how to create your tunnel. So firstly, as I've mentioned, if you're using a local system, this is really just um, a matter of adapting to you know the old workflows that, um, that, 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 that that you know the guys would normally have followed, so you don't really have to change much. It's a matter of taking your data, the existing data that you have, creating your alignment, then creating your tunnel, create a template. Template is ultimately now just defining the shape of your tunnel, as you can see there, defining that, and then ultimately you can expect to see this, but. Um, we're going to run you guys through a live the demonstration just showing you this complete process. But ultimately, um, it's a very easy and straightforward way of you don't have to change much. It's just ultimately just adapting to what um, the technology has to offer. And then once after this is done, you can now export to the field, to your controller, and start staking out and uh, doing the survey works. Okay, so Trimble Access Tunnels, this is now your field uh, um, uh, survey and set out uh, software that you will use. So here you can now, everything is done in TBC, your data has been prepped. You can still, if you need to do some editing, you can still do it in Trimble Access. But ultimately the idea is that you'll have all the data readily available. The positions that you need to set out will then already be exported from TBC. You'll get the data in and you can already proceed with the survey works. And once again, um, you will be able to see live on your screen um, of your controller, you can already see exactly how your data is building up. Right, then just to highlight some of the key features, here you can see some flexible tunnel designs. Um, once again, you can also you know, import your geometry, make some changes should it be necessary. Um, automated surveying and set out. This is quite a, a, a very uh, handy feature. So ultimately, you'll get the data and then selecting the, uh, the and, and doing a quick resection rather. So if you're doing a quick resection, you'll already be and uh, know the position of where you are in your tunnel and you will now just basically go and do automatic, uh, automatic stakeout. If it's grade lines, if it's your blast holes, there's a, a, a couple of options that you can, um, uh, that you can actually perform. Um, and then obviously also still in the field is to your in-field reporting. And then once the data has been captured, sending it back to uh, TBC for data analysis. And if you want to do the under and over break report, you can then do it there. Okay, so as I've mentioned, I want, um, the Trimble in the field, Data visualization, it's very handy with the big screen on the TC7. It's easy to interact with your data. You will see exactly where you are in reference to the, the, the data that you've imported. Um, so it's a quick way and uh, it's easy to understand the design. So it's less time wasted in the field. So you can, uh, the fact that you can already interact and see how your data is building up and where you are on site um, or underground, um, you will it's, 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 it's a matter of just doing a quick resection and then continuing with the survey works. Right.
then also it's an intuitive user experience. So it's the same kind of view that it doesn't matter where you're doing your survey works, um, above or underground, it's a, it's a matter of um, it's very straightforward and easy to use. Right, there's just some of the set out point options. Um, I'm just going to quickly just briefly list, uh, list them there. So here's your first option, your blast holes, your radial, horizontal and uh, vertical um, positions that you can stake out. And there's just a quick picture just highlighting, you know, exactly where would you go about setting out these points. And um, once again, if you will need to set out the, the blast holes on the face of the tunnel, there you can see at point number one, it's now basically, this is ultimately where the plane was supposed to be um, of the design surface, but it will, we all know that it's not like this underground, so it's a matter of now just projecting it straight to the face. So it doesn't matter what the grade line is, it will now take it and project it straight forward to the face of, 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 the, of the tunnel. Okay, the SX12, um, it's quite a, this is a, is a solution that's quite unique to the, you know, to the whole underground mining survey solution. Um, so it's the all-in-one instrument. So this is, as I've mentioned, it's, um, you will now go, it's got scanning capabilities, you've got your normal robotic turtle station capabilities. So it's really a matter of, you will be able, doesn't matter what kind of survey works, you need to do, you'll be able to do it with this instrument. So it's less items to carry around, it's less equipment that you need, it's uh, ultimately a all-in-one um, instrument. Okay, then just to highlight some of the key features on the SX-12, um, it's built for underground mining, it's got the, the smallest uh, laser point in the industry, which is uh, approximately 3 millimeters at 50 meters, also using making use of mag drive technology, and um, the, it's a suitable scanner and total station for a single measurement. And once again, it's a good integration with the Trimble Access and TBC tunneling modules. Right, and then next up is just to show you guys the Trim dedicated Trimble Mine survey website. So there's the link, so go and uh, please go and have a look at, uh, at the website. Here you can also see and go and view some previous recorded webinars on the specific topic for underground mining. Um, and then also some of the resources that's available. So uh, please feel f um, go and have a look here and um, see what, what other products are there also in this uh, portfolio. Right, then this is just to show you, it's, uh, we've tried this, we actually took the SX-12 um, to a diamond mine and we actually put this whole solution to the test and we were very, very uh, pleased with the, um, the, the, the results that we got from that demonstration. Right, so next up is the live demonstration. So uh, I'm going to now hand over to my colleague Albert. Um, Albert, I'm just going to unshare my screen. Thanks, Gustav. Right, and then it's all hey yours. Guys. Thank you so much. Okay, let's start off with the demonstration. Guys, so what I'll do is I'll start off in, in TBC, show you guys what it is needed just to do a quick tunnel design, uh, then exporting the data, and I'll then use Trimble Access just to show you the workflow there with the SX-12 that I've got ready here. Uh, show you what the workflows are like in Trimble Axis and then back into TVC I'll just quickly show you one or two of the reporting and so what the scan data would look like once you've done some work underground. So let's start off with TVC. Gustav, my screen clear, everybody can see nicely. Yes, Albert, all good. Okay, I'll just open up a project in TVC and obviously if you have existing CAD uh, drawings that you want to import, it's not a problem. TVC can handle that and it bring it in for you, it's not a problem. So what I'll do is I've just got uh, centerline data. I'll just quickly import that. It's just a normal CSV file, just with the actual points that we want to use. Uh, there we go. There you go, so there's the points we have. Uh, if you have an existing CAD file, I'm just going to bring in a DWG file that shows you the center line. So that's the center line of our design that we want to use. Uh, if you have control files, the same can be done there. You can just drag and drop your control file um, 
and in, off we go, import, and there you go. So there you can see we've got already a uh, center line, the points that we want to use as well, and then the control points for that. Next thing we need to do is if you go over to the tunnels module, you'll see it all works from left hand side just running through to the right hand side what you want to do. So first of all we need to just create the alignment so we know where, what center line we want to use to create this. So I'll just go tunnel one alignment. We can put it on a specific layer. You can make it a specific color if you want to as well. And then different options, you can obviously inscribe, uh, define individual segments, or we can use an existing line. So I'll just do that. I'll then choose my center line that I've already have, and then create the alignment. So there you can see it gives you a horizontal as well as a vertical alignment for that specific center line that I've chosen. So as you can see, anything in here you, that is in light blue, you will be able to change and adapt as you see fit. Uh, if you need to make any changes to your actual alignment that you want to use. Next up, you will see it already jumps to the corridor, so that just explains or, or shows or is the section of where your tunnel will run in. So we'll just make this tunnel one. And it will use the tunnel one alignment. As you can see, if you have more than one alignment, you can actually choose different alignments that you can build your the corridor on. Next up will be the actual tunnel that we now want to create. So we'll make this tunnel one. And again, if you have more than one specific corridor that you want to choose from, you can actually have multiple options here. Station interval, that will just be the actual intervals of the stations that you want to generate. We'll just make leave it at one meter. It's not a very long section that I'm going to do. But you obviously have the ability to change your station intervals according to your needs. Okay, next up will be just the template. So this is something that you can save. So if you want to do this design once and use it in future, you can save this template and always import it afterwards. Again, you can have multiple options here and you can copy a template if you then have that in your storage. Again, uh, next one, you can then select where you want to start with your template position. So as you can see, if you just have a certain design for a certain change, you can actually do that and then start another template on another change and continue there. So you've got the visibility uh, to do different options there. The tunnel shape will be next. Tunnel one shape. So that is how your what your tunnel will look like. Again, multiple options as you need. And again, if you have the shape saved, you can always copy that or import that shape and you don't have to redo the design every time. Okay, next up is the actual way to do the shape of the tunnel so you'll see down here is the visual part that's the center line so we want to everything works from the center line uh, when you do this tunnel design again multiple options the start point is where I will go so you can actually tell it where do you want to start so I'll just start at 1.5 meters below my actual center line there we go hope you can see that so down there you can see there's my start point next up I will decide I've got different options of how I want to con design my tunnel now. So the first one is I'll do I'll do a line slope and offset. So I can then tell it from the center line I want to go 2.5 meters to the left. And if you want to you can even add a little grade there. Not needed if you don't want to. So there you can see it starts building my tunnel for me. Next one I want to go upwards again. So I will do line elevation and offset. Horizontal distance will stay the same and we'll go 4 meters up for our design. Next obviously do a little curve so in there option I'm going to use is the arc center point and angle so now you can tell it what angle you want to go so it's going to be 90 degrees from the starting point and then you can tell it where do you want to place the actual center point of this arc you're going to generate and again as you can see it starts off at the center line that you have so for me to get to the point I want to go I need to go uh, minus 1.5 to the left and then upwards I need to go 2.5 to find my spot exactly there so that's 90 degrees from there gives me that little angle of there. Next one again line and slope so we can go to the other side it will be 3 meters at 0 here we go and then we'll do the arc and radius again 
arc and point and I'm sorry, arc and point and angle do exactly the same day, 90 degrees. This would be 1.5 now and 2.5. There we go. And then lastly, we just need to take it back down. So this will be minus four. There we go. And then to end it off, I can simply just go line endpoint and I can actually tell it where the endpoint is. So that will be zero and 1.5 and it will close up my tunnel design. And there you can see your tunnel design has been done. That will now be for the whole alignment. This tunnel design will then follow your whole alignment that you selected up there. And again, if you want to change anything, it's literally just changing any of these values you input it and it will automatically update your tunnel design that you've generated. Good. That is completed. Next thing, it's always nice to see your design. So you will see over here we have a design tunnel, tunnel mesh. So when I click on that, I can now give it a name. So that will be tunnel one design. Again, you can have multiple tunnels, which one you want to choose. I will put it on a separate layer. Tunnel one design, and we can choose a color for it. Let's go with green. There you go. So we'll now place it on its on a separate layer for you. And when you say okay, there you can see your tunnel design being built with your one meter intervals. Okay. Nice thing about TVC is everything doesn't have to be in plan view. Simply clicking on the little 3D view button, you will then be able to view your design in 3D. So I'll just quickly turn it around and there you can see we can actually have a look down the tunnel. You can see the changes in elevation as your tunnel goes. So there everything is already in 3D for you as well. So there you go. Tunnel designed in 3D in those steps. Not very difficult and if you have the existing data uh, makes life much easier for you to actually do your tunnel design. Good. Okay, now that we have that, next thing we need to do is uh, obviously underground you would like to go stake out some, some blasting holes or anchor points. There is the set out option that you get. So this will take you to this menu. You will see your tunnel design and then down here you can then decide what you want to do next. So I'm just going to do a few blast holes. Obviously the radial, horizontal and vertical, as Gustav showed in the slideshow, is where you can actually place points on the actual side of the tunnel where you want to place anchor points. So for blast holes, all you do is choose it. And again, you can have a different design for different chainages. So if you want to have different blast design from a certain chainage to end at a specific chainage, this is where you can put it in and you can have other blast holes for different changes if you want to do that. So I'm just going to do the complete one as it is. Let me just quickly get my blast design. So what you do is basically, basically do, again, it works from the center line. So I'm going to go minus 2.5 and then the first one would be minus 5. And there you can see your floor, first blast hole has been placed. And for there you just continue doing this minus 2.5 and as you can see it adds the blast holes as you go along. What I'll quickly do is I'll just do one in the center line so we can use that for our stakeout options just now. There we go. One in the center. a few blast holes so we can use it in our demonstration with Jumbo Axis just now. Okay, there we go. We'll do one more. And there you can see. So that is the process you just follow, continuing with that um, to do as many as you like. Uh, if you want to, you could even go to the horizontal one and place a point horizontally to the left uh, for an anchor point. And you can see over there, that's where it places the anchor point. So there's the option to do that as well. And you can then go stake out the anchor points if you feel like it. Um, so there are different options. Okay, once you've then completed this whole thing, you are then ready to go to the field and all we need to do is just export the data um, to go into Trimble Access. While I was just going to take a breather there, anybody have any questions relating to the design 
um, process and steps that I have done just now. Any comments, any questions? Albert, yeah, there's uh, currently one question from Tolanang, but I'll attend that, uh, to that question you know, um, via message. Um, sure. It was basically just uh, asking about the demo, did we actually do a demo to determine the under and over break? Uh, Tolanang, yes, the, uh, the answer is yes, uh, but I'll reply to this in the, in the comment section. So yeah, I think yep. uh, also Albert will still get to that point, just showing you yep. how the report works and stuff. So yeah, thanks Albert. Yep. Not a problem. Okay, so let's quickly continue. Next one I do is just to export the data. First one is you just go to your survey option. You will just create the Trimble Access Report. And then we just decide which points we want to take with us. So I'm just going to quickly select a small little section over there. Uh, let's just Here we go. That should be good enough for us. Well, yep, there we go. So those are the points that we will now export um, into our TBC job, uh, our Trimble Access job. So I'll just quickly save that. I'll just take this off screen. Just quickly put it on the right spot. Okay, uh, once I've done that, that is exporting that. Uh, yes, I've got a file ready, I'll just quickly overwrite that. And then secondly, you just need to export your actual tunnel design. So under corridors, you'll see there's a TXL tunnel export file. It then, obviously, if you have multiple tunnels, you can select which one you want to do. You can select the chainage that you want to use and the intervals. So that's all stuff you can decide on even when you export the data on exactly what you want to use. So I'm just quickly going to select the spot where I want to do Okay, we're going to export that. Okay, and then we're ready to go to the field. So I'll up, start up uh, Jumble Access just now. I just want to quickly get the data into the right space for Jumble Access. Just one second there, guys. Sorry, I just want to around the background here we go okay and now we'll head over to Trumbo Access SX12 is already ready to go and then we can just go into the data that's the project so what's nice about Trumbo Access at the moment is you've got a projects folder so you can have one uh, different projects that you're working on and inside the project you can have your different job files so for one project, you can have multiple job files and you can continue working there. If you move to a new product, you can then obviously create a new project for that. So just connecting there, open up the tunnels one, and there you go. There we have our data ready, just waiting for us to connect onto the SX12. Okay. Almost done, guys. Just waiting for the connection to finalize. Okay, there we go. We are now connected to our SX12. Different options. Obviously, you can see I have multiple options of targets. I'll just go with the laser pointer for now because we just want to set up the instrument. What I'll do next is I will go to survey and do a station setup. Obviously, I have the option to do a resection as well. For the purposes of this, it's just quickly doing it this way. Hopefully you can see the electronic bubble. Make sure we are good. Do your correction setup as you see fit for underground. And then we'll start. I'll just quickly create a fictitious setup here that I know will work for this job. 34, no backstop. And we'll do an angle only. Just want to quickly turn the machine so I can get a point that will work for me. Just one second, guys. Uh, and if anybody wants to see what the SX12 looks like, I'll uh, show you just now when we do some work what it does and how it looks like when it operates. Okay, there we go. And I'll just quickly do a measurement for the back side. Oh, that's good. There we go. 
Okay, measurement done, gives you your angles and I will store it. Obviously, if you do a resection, you will get residuals as well. So you can do more than two points. You can do three or four point resections and it will give you a residual result so you can see how accurate it was done. Now that we're happy with that, um, next thing we can do is I'll just quickly turn the instrument around to face in the direction where the tunnel should be. Just quickly do that on my side. As you can see, the little red line shows you exactly where the instrument is looking at the moment, so it already knows where it is in the tunnel, uh, and it can see where it needs to go. Once you are done with that, the next thing to do is go to survey, and then you have an option. You can do auto scan, you can find a position in the tunnel if you want to. So if I click on there, I can choose my tunnel design, and I can actually see where I am in the tunnel. So at the moment, you can see this is where my pointer is pointing. Uh, so there's the center line, that is where it's currently looking in, in, in the tunnel design. So you can see where you are and what you position it. It gives you the station and already gives you some underbreak value. So if I go to the top of it, if I want to see if the guys that they were correct, you can actually point it to where the actual tunnel surface is and it will then give you an uh, underbreak and overbreak report already exactly from your information. Next we want to do, let's just uh, look at doing some stakeout of the blast holes as we design some of them. So you'll go to set out. Again, select your tunnel design. First thing you want to do is you want to actually see where is your stations, uh, where on the chainage you are currently. So we'll do just do a measurement quickly. And the end station would be exactly the same because we're just going to work to the face. And if you want to, you can even give it a tunnel uh, station set up if you're going to do a bit more further stuff if that was required. And now you can see it gives me an indication of where the instrument is at the bottom. You will see there is the actual profile view. So there we can see this is what we currently would see. You can see your uh, anchor point that we want to stake out is over there. And then the blue dots is actually the blast holes. So if I just right click and say all blast holes, it's, there we go. It has highlighted them all in blue. So you can see those are the actual measurements that the instrument is now going to do. So let's try and be very clever and see if I can show you what the SX... 10 would do. I'll see if I can do this uh, through my camera. There we go. Um, so let me see if this is going to work. So just to give you an indication, uh, see if this camera will turn on. Uh, swap it around. There you can see, I uh, hope that works. There's the SX-12 ready to go. And the green laser is already pointing on the white wall over there. So if I then go to auto, I then have an option to tell the instrument what the accuracy is I want to see when I uh, for, for the staking out, uh, what the tolerance should be. I'm just going to make that 0 0.5. That's obviously up to you. And it will take five measurements to determine if it's oops, 0 0.05. The amount of measurements it will do to see if it falls within that accuracy. Next up would be the starting point. So when it starts saving the information, every time it does a blast or stakeout, it will save the point for you as well. You can give the instrument's perspective as well. And then the delay is how long it will take before the instrument starts doing the auto stakeout. And then how many seconds it will take or give you to mark the point on the actual uh, first surface. So that you can increase to 30 or 50 seconds depending on how much time you need to mark the specific spot on the working face. Uh, then obviously you've got some more options over here. We'll just go enter for now. Accept. And now we just wait for the instrument to start doing the auto stakeout. And there you will see it already goes. It tries to determine that point. Obviously, I'm on the table here, so it's right there. And there you go. It now gives you an option to mark the point. It found it on the surface within the set tolerance, and you now have this time to mark it. You'll see the little white dot up here. That little white dot is actually a little LED light that flashes as well. So it helps you in dark environments to actually see a little bit better where you are and helps you with that. So that is. And then it will automatically continue on to the next point depending on how many blast holes you have set up there. So that's just a quick idea of how it will work. Once done, you are finished with that and you set out your blast holes. Uh, same would work for that one over there. So if you want to do that uh, anchor point over there, uh, not sure it will work. So it's not the actual tunnel we're working in, but I'll just go to auto. 
and you will see where it will look for it. So you can see the instrument is now trying to see if it can find a spot where that will be. You can see it's now running around and not really finding it's not the best space for this. Obviously, the room I'm sitting in is not made for this actual design to fit in there. But as you can see, as soon as it doesn't find it, it will also tell you that it failed. It couldn't get that point with the required accuracies to place it for you in that. Okay. And that is how it works in the tunnel design. Any questions there, Gustav? Anything you need to answer uh, at the moment? All but it's still good. I'm attending to most, uh, uh, you know, most of the questions um, on the chat box. So, yeah, all good on this side. Yeah. Thank you. Not a problem. Just to show you guys, the SX12 has got a good, nice zoom functionality on it. So, obviously, we'll see the little green dot there. Can't see it right now. I'll just zoom in. So, there you can see the green laser. Um, this is in a, in a lit up room and you can still see the quality and how easy it is to pick up that green laser um, anywhere in this, in this space. So just to give you an idea of what the green laser looks like when using the SX-12. Okay. Once you're done with that, uh, you finished your survey, you can also go do a scanning option. As you saw on the survey, there is auto scan. Uh, you can do some 3D, uh, you can do a full dome scan. Uh, so you can actually then scan the date, uh, your, your underground works as well once you've done the setouts. And once that is done, I'll now move back into TBC, uh, copy the data from the TSC7, and then we can import it into TBC to then start looking at the data and comparing it to the design um, in TBC. So I'll quickly go out of this and then go back to TBC. So what I'll do, I'll just quickly open up the file where I've already got the data in. Save that. All good with TBC on your side, Gustav? All you good. Thanks, Albert. Yes. Okay. So this is an actual scan that was done. Uh, as you can see, there were some points placed on this on the working face as well. We we did some stakeout options to see where the actual uh, blast hole should be. Uh, as you can see, what that looks like. Um, very nice, and the point cloud that we got out of that. You can see what that looks like as well. So there you go. And it's all in 3D already, all georeferenced uh, as the instrument was set up on a, a resection with known control points. So that is the kind of uh, data you will get out of it. Okay. First thing we want to do once we've, we're happy with that, uh, let's just quickly switch on the actual design so you guys can see what that looks like. So there's my tunnel design. So you can already get a, get, get a good indication of exactly how accurate uh, your design and your actual as-built data would look like already. Visualizing it is already a very good indication of how the work is going. So as you can see, the specific little section, the guys uh, started going a little bit off design there. Um, and that is very clear in what we can see over there. Next you want to do is, let's say we want to actually compare this to our design data now. So in the tunnels module, you'll see there is a assigned tunnel points. So that basically just creates at a specific interval uh, points that you want to generate on your actual as-built point cloud that you can compare with your design. Uh, it's creating a cross section and you can tell it the intervals, as you can see over there, 10 one meter intervals. So I'll quickly generate one here. Uh, I've got a short chainage setup that should work for us. The chainage. So Again, you don't have to do the whole design or the whole ASPL that you've done. You can literally just take whatever chainage you, you want to, to do to narrate a report. I'll just make it a one meter chainage, but again, you've got the option of choosing the chainage of your cross sections that you want to generate. Then you want to say what is your tunnel shape. And then the point cloud region you want to use, I'll just select that one. Now you can tell it what the search distance should be. Uh, there it is. We'll use that. And then as built, uh, we can then go with that. And then when you generate the points, you'll see I've already done this. I'll switch it on for you now. And then if you go to the as built points, that is the kind of data that you would generate. So as you can see, all the sections, those little yellow markers is what they generated on the as built point cloud. And the as built uh, that was generated from your as built creation. So you can see over there the as built mesh that I've already done, and that is what it would look like with that combined. So it will generate the as-built mesh for you from your actual scan data that was done underground. So as you can see, if I zoom in, hopefully you can see it, all the little as-built points 
you can see there that it has used to create this ash build mesh. So again, very easy to quickly view where your actual as built mesh and your design is not exactly matching up. You can already see what the impact of that is on the current work that you've done. Okay. Once that is all completed and you've done your as, uh, let's quickly show you the as built mesh, just the options you have there. So in the as built mesh, if you have scan data and it can be scan data from other um, hardware as well, you can give it a name, classify it, choose the design you want to compare it to, put it on a separate layer. You can choose the actual points you want to use, the point cloud you want to use, and you can sample them down. So if you have a very dense point cloud but you don't need all those points, you can actually sample it down to one centimeter, ten centimeter spacing just to make it a bit more smoother and more accurate or you can make it more dense depending on what you require there. And all you would they do is uh, click on accept and it will generate a sample point cloud with the spacing you require and it will then generate this ash build mesh as you can see over here in the yellow to create that for you. Okay. Then obviously that's all well and nice. Next thing you need to do is you need to create the as built report. So I will click on that and show you the options here. So there again you can have multiple designs. You call it a report. You give it the different changes you want to use, where you want to start, where you want to end. So you can obviously have different changes you want to report on. Again, the change tolerance and then your overbreak and underbreak tolerance as well that you would like to see and the color of what it will be in the report when you generate that. And then you can fit the drawing to best fit your paper size. So that is all your options you have to select to generate the report and just to get you guys an idea of what that report looks like. So that little section I did, uh, Gustav, all good on your side? You can see my tunnel as well. Yes, report. Albert, all good. Thank you. And there you guys can now see. So everything in green, as we said, is when it's too much and in red is where it's too little and that is the kind of data you get. So you can see I did overdo it on the points. I'll show you guys a, a, a report just now that's not as much points as this, but this is just what is possible. So you can already see exactly how your as built and your design compares to each other. In the report, you get the station, the scale of what the drawing is on, the station, accuracy, the overbreak and the underbreak. You can see the accuracy that you selected. Then you can say the cross section on alignment just to see where you are coordinate wise. And then if there was any surveyed area, it gives you that area already in square meters, a design area. So you can already see the as build is much bigger than what the actual design area is. Survey circumference and the design circumference, you can again compare that. Overbreak area and underbreak, it gives you already the area of that and at the average and then the average on the underbreak as well. Next up, you get that in a table form as well. So all these points that I have over here, they are all in this table and you can then see the point, horizontal, elevation, delta and the change and so it goes. And obviously red and green depending on the under or overbreak. That runs through and then each one meter section is where you then get this report. So obviously if guys have to go do this underground, you'll do a setup every three meters or every five meters, do a little cross section measuring some points. Obviously when it comes to these little sections at the top where the curves are, it's not always that easy to find data and to measure data there. So you can see the amount of data I already have to compare to my design everywhere is where I can see this. Remember this was obviously where the guys started realizing they are going way off design. So this is where the foot of the design is not completely matched up, but that just gives you a good indication of the amount of data you can get out of this, depending on how, how deep you want to go into, into the data. Just to show you a bit more simpler report that's not as detailed as this one, or not as detailed, a bit less points, just to give an idea of what is capable. So there's one that I did uh, that looks a little bit less dense with points, so there you can see gives you a good indication it's a bit further down the tunnel where they have actually done some stuff. Uh, that's more closer to there and there you can already get the idea of how close you are to your actual design compared to your as built. So there you go. Again, guys have done a pretty good job there. Here you can see still finding some areas that's a bit skewed. Uh, also just remember I did do the setups quite far apart so there might be some shadow areas. So that's the one thing with scanning is you just got to remember the angle of incidence when you do a scan to take that into consideration when you plan your stations to ensure you don't have too many shadows 
uh, that might cause uh, small little areas like this where you don't have enough points. I'll just take you right to the bottom of the report uh, just to show you that section again where the guys went off design so there you can already see that once but over here you can see not enough data and you can see there the kind of things are happening where you can see the guys starting to go a little bit off where they wanted to be. Right at the end of the report uh, you do get a little summary so you can see the total sum of the as-built area you can get the sum of the design area the total as-built volume your design volume to compare the two so you can see the guys definitely mined more than what the design required volume wise the sum of the overbreak and the sum of the underbreaks you already got that in there as well then your total overbreak volume and your total underbreak volume also calculated for that specific chainage to chainage that you chose for your report good and that is it for the reporting side any questions any comments on any of this that I have shown at the moment yeah uh, thanks Albert yeah thanks for sharing that um, Albert we don't have is there please guys if you've got any questions and stuff please feel free to just list them uh, dot them down you know in the chat box um, Albert how many setups did you do for the specific scan um, only two only so that two, was two just scan. two setups done for this right. data yes there was only two setups done Excellent. Um, so yeah, uh, Albert, and then also, I mean, ultimately, if you've got other sensor data, um, I mean, with TBC, it's a matter of now just importing various um, sensor data that you can now just import. Um, yes. Yeah, maybe just, if you can just elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, so guys, any total station data, any CSV files, any LAS files, uh, any scan data, files that you have that is due referenced on your existing data this will just be a drop and drag function into TBC CAD work if you have any of that you can just drop it in TBC will open it up and you can compare it to what you currently have or what you have done previously so it is not uh, hardware only for the, the SX12 any related last file that you can or have used or want to use can be imported into C TBC to compare to this design that you've generated in and Albert, I'm assuming I'm assuming you can compare one point cloud with another point cloud for that sort of convergence monitoring that, that you guys want to do as well. Yes. So if you walk down correct, so and you do another scan, you can compare them with one another to see what the convergence is. Yes, that is true, and that's also for volume calculations going for for progress, uh, comparing two scans to see what the progress was on a weekly or monthly basis. That will also be an asphalt to asphalt comparison uh, that that you will be able to do. Yes, that is possible. Excellent. Uh, okay, there's uh, no questions currently. Um, thanks, Albert. I'm just going to, please, guys, if you still have questions, please, um, you know, just uh, uh, dot them down. I'm just going to quickly just uh, share my screen again. Albert, if you can just confirm if you can see it there, please. Yes, all good, good stuff. Got it. Okay, perfect. All right, um, let me just move over to the social media side of things. Guys, as I've mentioned, um, please feel free to just go and have a look um, on our, the various social media platforms that we are um, active on. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I'll put my email address down uh, with Albert's. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you would like to see more of the data, please feel free to reach out, as I've mentioned. Um, yeah, so ultimately, follow us on Facebook, follow us on, on, on LinkedIn. Go, go and have a look at our webinars. As I've mentioned, um, all of our webinar recordings will be available. So you can just go to our website, go to the webinars, and then all the list of the, the previous webinars will be listed there. And Gustav, I know you love going underground, so I mean, I guess if there's anyone on the webinar that would like a live demo on this site, you're definitely up for that as well. We're up for it as well. Work yes. Your workflow and how it fits into your workflow, I think that's also important yeah. for us to make it as easy to adapt to the way you work as possible. Exactly, yeah, 100% in. I've got my hard hat and everything ready, so yeah, we're ready to rumble. <laughs> right. Guys, yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Albert. Thank you for um, a great live demonstration. Um, Not a problem. Thanks, Gustav. I'll stick around for another four or five minutes. If there's any comments or any guys that want to ask anything, we'll be around for the next four or five minutes. Uh, but thanks. Thanks for hosting.
Excellent. Thank you, guys. Have a great day further.